on, let's let's backtrack a little bit. Monday we identified functions. Tuesday we described functions. Wednesday we evaluated functions. And today we're going to be comparing functions. All right? Yes. So the first note I want you to write is that we can represent functions as, and then I want you to write this, okay? This is kind of a new idea for us, I believe. I don't think you learned this last year in Math 7. That's right. F of X is what this is called. We call it a F of X. And we can use F of X instead of using Y. And f of x is just shorthand for it's a function of x, right? So let's see how we're going to see uh, or what that's going to look like. If we have um here, let me just write. For example, what color should I use? F of x is equal to two x plus three. So all we're doing now is taking out the y, and we're replacing y with f of x. It's f with an x in parentheses, just like that. And we're just going to use that instead of y from now on. And the reason why is when we're comparing functions, we're going to be looking at two separate equations at the same time. So if they're both y equals, that implies that they um, are equations that work together. Right, if we have y equals this and y equals that, then technically this is equal to that. Don't worry too much about that, the specifics of that. Just know that we're now saying f of x. All right. So what are we going to do with comparing functions? Let's just take a look at an example. And I think that's pretty much all we're going to do. Yep. Um, okay. So let's start with a table here of x and f of x. And for our x values, we'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we'll go 7, 4, 1, negative 2, negative 5. And then we're going to have another function. We're going to have x, and instead of f of x, we're going to have g of x. Okay? Stay with me. Just copy it down. We'll talk about it. That's right. You can use any letter for a function. We just default it to f because function starts with the letter f. But this is why I said we're moving away from using y, and instead we're going to use f of x, g of x, h of x, whatever we need. Because this shows that these are two completely separate functions. If they both use x and both use y, we have to assume that they work together. Just like we saw in our systems of linear equations. We had two equations that both started with y equals, and then we could solve those that way. But these are two completely separate ideas that we're going to be comparing. So that's the main difference here. G of x, we're going to have 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. And then we'll have 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6.
So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find M and B from each function. This is all going to be review, right? We know how to do this already. We know how to find the slope from a table. After we find M and B, we're going to write the equations and this isn't always going to be what we do sometimes it'll give you the equation and it'll give you a table sometimes it'll give you an equation and a graph to compare you'll compare a graph and a table For right now we're just doing two tables yes go ahead yes do I have cough drops no unfortunately not I'm sorry what? no Sorry, buddy. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to compare the steepness of the slopes. We're going to compare the steepness oops, of the slopes. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to describe each function, which is exactly what we did on Tuesday. Is it proportional or non-proportional? Is it linear or non-linear? Sorry, I keep blocking the words. Let's go ahead and start with step one here. And we're going to start with f of x. We're going to go f of x first. So we're looking for the m, and we're looking for the b. What is our b value in f of x? Seven. Theo, how do you know that it's seven? No, how do we know that it's 7? Because it's lined up with 0. That's right. We look at our table, and whenever we're trying to find b, we're looking for wherever x is equal to 0. We see that right here, and that gives us a b value of 7. Right there is our value for b. Now, how are we going to find our slope using a table? Does anyone remember? No, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, the change in y, the We're going to look for the change in y over the change in x. How do we get from 4 to 1? Minus, minus, three. minus 3. How do we get from 1 to 2? Plus 1. Plus one. Right? Yeah. And these are always going to be nice and constant, so we don't have to do all of them. So what is our slope? Is it negative 1 third? No. Negative 3. Negative three over 1, right? Negative 3, change in y over positive 1, or change in x. Now remember, we always want to write our slope as a fraction from now on, so we got to put that over 1. Now that we know the slope and the y-intercept, we can write the equation of this line, right? And instead of using y equals mx plus b, we're going to use f of x equals mx plus b. Again, same exact formula. Instead of y, we're using f of x. So our function will read f of x equals what? 
That's right, negative 3 over 1, which we'll just write as negative 3 for the equation. Negative 3x plus 7. And uh, we can actually switch steps 3 and 4 around. The, the order doesn't matter for 3 and 4. So let's go ahead and describe this first. What type of function is this? How would you describe this function? Linear. Linear, perfect. What makes you say that it's linear? There's no exponent. That's right, there's no exponent. So it's definitely linear. And then is it proportional or non-proportional? Non-proportional, non right? We got a b value of 7. Proportional relationships have a b value of what? Zero, zero. zero right? There we go. Now let's hop over to g of x. We can't compare the steepness until we know what the slope of each function is. Yes? No. So when we're comparing functions, you cannot just put y. Okay. Because we have to know that these are two separate functions. And once we get to the worksheet, you'll see that more because we've got word problems that have a context. It's only one. It's only one. It's only one problem. Um, where we have a specific context, right? Where we're comparing the, uh, the, the road trips between two people in separate cars. So those two functions operate individually of each other just like these two do. That's why we have to use f of x and g of x. Now, if we're just dealing with one function, we can use y, like we were yesterday. But now that we've got two at a time, this is why we're doing that, OK? Does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah. OK. Uh, what's our b value? Let's go back up to the table. What's our b value for g of x? Two. Two, good. We're seeing that now. We're noticing the pattern. What's our change in y? How do we get from uh, three to four? Plus 1. How do we get from 3 to 6? Plus 3. So what's my slope? Positive 3? 1 over 3. Good. Change in y over the change in x. And like we said, our b value is 2, right? So we can write the equation g of x is equal to blank x plus blank. What's our equation going to look like? 1 over 3x plus 2, right? And then let's go ahead and describe this function as well. Is this one linear? Definitely linear. I don't see any exponents at all. And then is this proportional or non-proportional? Non-proportional, our b value is 2, right? So far, we haven't learned any new procedures. All we learned that was new was this concept of f of x. But everything else, we should be pros at by now, right? Finding m from a table, locating b on a table. This is stuff we've spent weeks and weeks and weeks on. It kind of feels like overkill at this point, right? But we're adding new stuff as we go. So now we have to do step three, which should have been step four. That was my bad. We're going to compare the steepness of the slopes. Now, we talked about this a little bit during our slope conversations, but which of these two lines is going to be steeper? What do you think? The one on the left. The one on the left. Why do you think this f of, sorry, Theo, why do you think f of x is going to be a steeper line? because it's a negative. Interesting observation. We see that we have a negative slope here, but a positive oh. slope here. So let me, let me ask you this. Give me a thumbs up if you know what I mean by steepness. Uh, like, I remember OK, so only a couple people know what steepness I, means. I, I, let me uh, talk I, about I, that I think then. I know why. OK, let's figure out how we even know or what steep even is. Think back to our treadmill conversation, right? Yeah. 
It's just like the incline of a treadmill. So if we have a line that's something like this, and we're going to have another line that looks like this. Okay, here are the two lines, right? Which of these two lines, just by looking at them, would you guys say is more steep? The orange line or the blue line? The blue line, right? So what about the blue line tells you that that's a steep line? It's going down more. It's going down more? Well, from left to right, this line's going up, right? Oh, wait, up more. I mean, same difference. Okay, good. Good observation, Brazon. We're on the right track. So steepness is a measure of verticality. Okay, how vertical is this function? Which of these functions is more vertical? The orange one or the blue one? The blue one, right? The blue line is a lot closer to a vertical line, a straight up and down line. What type of line is the orange one close to being? Horizontal, right? So the closer your function is to horizontal, the less steep it is. We're looking at this right here, right? If this was a mountain, right, that's a pretty steep mountain for you to climb. That's where you may have heard that term before, potentially. But it's really, really steep. It would be super hard to climb that. But this orange line over here, that's not steep at all. That would be fairly easy to walk across. That's like a little hill, as opposed to a giant mountain like that. Does that kind of help clear up what steep means a little bit? Yeah. Okay, okay. So. It helps when we can see the graph, right? But I can't see a graph here. I just see a bunch of numbers and stuff. It, so yeah, f of x is going to be steeper. But how do we know just based on these equations, Theo? Go for it. If you were to, I don't know how to explain. I think I know how to explain. If you were to take the square root of x minus one over two. That's okay. Give it a shot. That's okay. I'll come back to you. Noah, you want to help us out? By looking at the slope. Yeah, okay, good, good. What about the slope? Like, so, the slope, since it's usually 3 over 1, you have to go over, uh, up 3 over 1, and you see that it's way more, it's more I know why upwards now. other than 1, up 1 over 3. Absolutely. Well said, Noah. Thank you. Theo, you want to jump in too before I go? I was going to say, it's the, it's the change in y, or y is greater than that's right, perfect. So you guys are both on the same page. So we are focusing on the slopes, right? That's why we're comparing the slopes to see which one is steeper. Here we've got negative three and here we've got positive one third. So you may think, okay, I gotta look, one of them's negative, one of them's positive, right? That has nothing to do with it. A measure of steepness, uh, it doesn't have to do with the direction our line is going. Whether it's a steep positive line or a steep negative line, it's still steep, right? And if it's a not so steep positive line or a not so steep negative line, it's still not so steep. So we're not looking at the sign, we're looking at the size of the number. The smaller our slope is, the closer to a horizontal line we have. Because one over three tells us that we're going up one and over three. That gives us a relatively flat line, right? But if we were going up three and over one, that gives us a nice steep line right here. This one has an M of three. This one has an M of one third. So regardless of positive or negative or anything like that, we're looking at which is the bigger number. Three is a lot bigger than one third. I'd rather have three dollars than one third of a dollar, right? That's only 33 and a third cent. So whatever number is bigger, that's your steeper line. So we can go ahead and say here, f of x is steeper because three is greater than one third. 
but we're not worrying about the signs. Remember, I'm going to write over here, disregard the signs on your slopes. You're only looking at the number. Did you guys learn about absolute value last yeah, year? Yeah. Okay. So think of it like the absolute value of your slope. If it's negative, it doesn't matter. Let's just think of it as a positive. Because we're looking at the size of the number, not the uh, necessarily what direction we're sloping. I know that was kind of long-winded, but give me a show of thumbs on how we're feeling about that idea. Which one is specifically only about comparing the steepness? How are we feeling? Thumbs up if you think you got it. Thumbs sideways if I confused you a little bit, which is totally understandable. I'm a little confusing sometimes, most of the time. Okay, that's fine. Okay, um, how much time do we have left? Not a lot, I'm assuming. Oh, we do. We got like 16 minutes. That's good. 